Richard Krause. Setting-wise, there's a definite similarities between uh, the new film, Gentlemen Broncos, and Napoleon Dynamite. Were you um, at all trepidatious about going back to such a familiar setting for the film after making Nacho Libre, which was something much yeah. different again? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was a lot of fun, actually, um, you, know, l you know, being able to shoot this film in Utah, where I live now, and... You know, the Rocky Mountain West is, is something, you know, just kind of a culture and thing that's kind of in my blood. So uh, it was a lot of fun. We were able to use a lot of the same crew and, and film school buddies that helped me on, on Napoleon. And so it was kind of fun to get the team back together, uh, you know, as well as be able to sleep in my own bed at night when we were done shooting. Now, does the house that Benjamin lives in, which kind of looks like a space pod in right. the middle of kind of nowhere, it looks like, does that actually exist or was that built for the film? Uh, that's a real house. Um, you know, as a kid, I was jealous of anybody that lived in a geodesic dome home. I always wanted to live in one. Um, but we found one, you know, about 40 minutes outside of Salt Lake City. Uh, and it's funny because the gentleman that actually owned the house also owned the movie theater that we shot in, which was kind of interesting. So it was kind of a two for one deal. How has the the process of of making your films changed from the point at which you made the short film, which eventually became Napoleon Dynamite, and then the success of Napoleon Dynamite must have taken you by surprise a little bit. I mean, oh, to yeah, have a definitely. film blow up that way, I mean, right. you know, it's a kind of an unbelievable feat. And then on to Nacho Libre, and then on to this film. Has the process changed for you, or are you still kind of the same guy and filmmaker that you were starting off? Yeah, you know, I mean, I definitely feel like the same guy, you know, that I was, you know, starting off when we first made Napoleon. Um, yeah, you know, with Napoleon, I don't think any filmmaker anticipates that their first film will do anything. And, and um, we'd hoped that maybe we could get into some film festivals and that it would, you know, open other doors for us in, in, in different ways. But uh, never anticipated getting into Sundance and then getting picked up by a major studio and then released and then having it take off like it did. It, you know, it's all been kind of a fairy tale, I guess. Um, but it's great because that film being as offbeat and specific and, uh, you know, a, a, as it was, has um, definitely allowed us to continue to do those kind of films, which is, which is great. How would you describe them? You call them offbeat and very specific. I mean, expand on that a little bit more for me. Is that what we can come to expect as, as the Hess style or come to call that? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I think, um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we hope, you know, I, I think as I mature as a filmmaker, there are different types of things that, that I want to try my hand at. I want to make a Western someday. I mean, it'll be quite silly, but I, I want to do a Western. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's fair enough to say. Um, tell me uh, a little bit about Jermaine Clement and working with him in this because it seemed to me that he was like channeling Michael York or something this, this, just the voice very specifically so tell me a little bit about uh, uh, working with him because I think he just brings so much to this in, in terms of yeah. just being fearless right. I think right yeah um, Jermaine he's, he's very funny in the film and we um, uh, you know uh, sent him the script and and he was in New Zealand, and we weren't sure if he'd be available because of his TV show, but he called back, and he was like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I'm into it, man, let's do it. And so we uh, uh, started talking about the character, and he initially wanted to kind of play him as an American, with an American accent. He had an acting coach in college or something that was a, quite a character. Um, but I told him actually to watch Logan's Run and try and, you know, imitate the voice of, of Michael York and then he called back a couple of days later and was like, yeah, I've been trying it out and my wife, check it out, Dr. Chevalier. <laughs> and and uh, we were all very excited that that would be the direction that we'd take it. Was there ever a point at which you thought, oh, it's too much or is there, is there a line where there's too much? Not really with this character. We, I mean, we had so much fun, I, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a level of restraint that you exercise when you're doing a comedy to, to not make, you know, be too on the nose with stuff. But, um, you, you know, you, you just have to have love for the characters and, and try and make them as genuine and, and not kind of self-conscious of, of, of what they're doing when they're, you know, bringing these people to life. Richard Krause.